guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name is Stan, and uh, it's, summer bash is over, and uh, it's time to get back to the grind, in the most literal sense. Now, um, during the bash, I was given a couple of arbors by Tom Lipton, and Tom, I thank you for that very much. Um, but what he did give me uh, was was a balancing arbor. Um, this is the these are the balancing rings here on the back. And right here, you can see a couple of uh, arrows. And behind these, <clears throat> behind these balancing rings, there's a there's a cavity, a half circle cavity on each one. And when you counter rotate those, it sends that cavity closer and farther, uh, closer together, or farther together to balance out the wheel. Now, what I need to do is I need to make an arbor to put this thing on and, and come up with a balancing rig. So, um, according to Machinery's Handbook and the manufacturer. Um, the taper on, on a Boyer Schultz is uh, three inches per foot. That's a TPF taper per foot, uh, three inches. So if we do the math, we would come up with, uh, oh, let's see, the math would be, uh, we would take the three inch, divide it by uh, 12 inches or a foot, equals uh, uh, two, uh, 0.25, so quarter inch, of taper per inch is what we're looking at. So that's uh, what that, that's one two five per side. So that's what we're looking for here, and we want to verify that. You know, before we go to the time to make an arbor, we want to verify that. So I'm going to show you my setup and how I'm going to uh, how I'm going to measure this effectively. <clears throat> I've got the backlash out of the uh, out of the uh, uh, y axis here. So we we've come here and we've uh, taken the backlash out. And we're coming up on uh, zero. I've already zeroed my dial here. I've got my indicator set here uh, with the stem um, straight up and down. You don't want to tip it and follow the taper. Uh, you don't want to be adjacent to the taper. You want to be uh, 90 degrees from the sp uh, spindle center line. So we've got our indicator set on zero. You just move your top beat up and down so you zero the gauge. So we're zero, zero. Um, this hand wheel is uh, 100 thousandths per crank, so uh, 10 cranks is going to give us one inch of table movement, and at that point we should see, uh, what did I say, 0.125 of, uh, of indicator movement. I'm on my center line, I've, I've moved back and forth here until I found my highest spot on my, uh, on my gauge. And then you can you can readjust here and get your zero. So uh, I, this is a good way to effectively measure uh, your taper right on the machine. I'm going to go ahead and try to get you guys in where you can see the gauge, and you're probably not going to be able to see what I'm doing here with my hand. But I'm going to I'll count them off. I'll count off the uh, I'm going to do ten revolutions on on this uh, cross slide. But let's get you in where you can see that gauge a little better and where I can still do my moving I think you can see that yeah you're doing good okay so let's uh, there's one two three four five so we're halfway there six Seven, eight, nine, and coming up on ten, right there. So we should see one, two, five. Um, on our secondary gauge, we're we've got the hundred thousandths, and uh, yeah, twenty-five. So that's that's our uh, taper per foot that we were looking for. Um, that's a I'm just verifying it, you know, before I go to the trouble to make it. Uh, there's more accurate ways to do it. Uh, your table movement could also be monitored with another dial indicator if you needed to. I just use the hand wheel uh, just to verify uh, what we've got, but I, I'm real comfortable with those results. Uh, but that's how you can measure a taper um, on your uh, on your setup. And you can, you can make sure it repeats. You'd come back... Uh, um, Come back to your zero, make sure you're re-zero and all that. So we're coming up on our zero here. 
that's our starting point uh, here on this hand wheel and we've got zero here on our gauge and if you want to repeat it one two three four five six seven eight nine and uh, that's my tenth revolution right to zero uh, repeatable results point one two five okay so uh, we're pretty confident that we've got a quarter inch of taper per inch or three inches of taper per foot um, so that that's the type of arbor we need to, uh, to need to make um, I don't know whether we're going to convert that into an angle yet or not. We might turn that into a degree and express that in degrees, or um, how we're going to cut it on the lathe. But we're going to uh, we're going to go over there and figure it out. But now we know what we got to work with. All right, I'll bring you back for the rest. Okay, so we've got our uh, <clears throat> our drawing here. I'll show you what we did there. Um, so our one inch is our major diameter. Over, over one inch travel, we taper down to 750, so that's a quarter inch of uh, uh, reduction over one inch. And we need to split that in half, obviously, before we do any uh, calculations. Um, but if we go to a uh, the, the engineer's uh, black book, this is actually a pretty good little reference. Uh, taper turning on a standard lathe. And um, here's, an, here's a good example. They give you an example here. And calculate it out for yourself. Make sure you're, you're doing your math right. And then insert your dimensions. And uh, what we came to was uh, uh, 250.250. And that, of course, gets uh, divided by 2. Uh, so that's uh, uh, 0.125, which is uh, per side of taper. And what's kind of cool about this is uh, they give you cross-references in here the result can now be looked at uh looked up in the table of natural tangents on page 166 so they give you a cross reference so now we go to page 166 which i had uh here and uh, this tangent table is broke down into uh, 10 minute increments so you got your degrees uh zero minutes 10 minutes 20 30 60 or 30 40 50 60 and that'll take you up to your next uh, next degree. So we have to look up uh, 125 on here. Uh, so we're at uh, 7 degrees. Yeah, 7 degrees is just under 10 minutes. Um, if we're 7 degrees 10 minutes, our formula would be 0.125 uh, and 7 tenths. Uh, right there. So, uh, I mean, you could go to the machinery's handbook and it goes, it'll, the tables will go from, it'll break it down uh, all the way in the minutes in one minute increments. So it, this is probably like seven degrees, nine minutes or something like that. But uh, that, that's the way you can uh, calculate it off of, off of the tangents. The other way is, is just to, to, instead of turning it into a degree, uh, we can just go straight to a sine bar. So we already know that we've got a, a 250 drop per side, or no, 250 drop overall, uh, 125 per side over one inch. So if we took a sine bar like this, and our sine rolls, the sine bar we're going to use, we already know this is 5 inch here. On a sign, so we we know we already know we're five inch, um, and then we're going to take our uh, one two five point one two five and multiply that times the length of our sign bar, which is five inch. So we'd take um, point one two five times five equals point uh, six two five would be a, a gauge block stack. So if I took point six two five and put it under one of the uh, rolls of the of the sign bar. Uh, that's going to tilt uh, our sign bar up to our seven degrees, uh, ten minutes, whatever. But this is the most accurate way to do it. We're not breaking it. We're not converting it from 
the sine table to the tangent table, converting it into an angle, and then try to get over on the machine and do an angle. We're taking it straight from uh, what is known straight to a sign bar. So there's two ways to go about it. You're better off going straight to the sign bar to, to, uh, to make your uh, calculation. So we need 0 0.62250, 0 0.625. Let's go over here and make a gauge block stack. I'll go ahead and run you over here. You've got kind of a mess over here, but I'll go ahead and let the camera fly. Get you propped up here a little bit. I've still got odds and ends sitting around here from the bash. Get my drawer open, get a gauge block set up here. Get the sign bar out. Paper towel holder. Finally found it. Okay. So the gauge block stack is uh, 625. Uh, we need to find the first decimal place. The third decimal place, there's a 105. So we're going to de deduct that, 0 0.105. So that's a 0, that's a 2, that's a 5. So now I need 520. Um, so we're going to take, uh, we're going to move that next decimal place. Here's a 120. So I'm going to deduct 0 0.120. And uh, that puts me at zero, zero, four. So I need, now all I need now is uh, uh, four hundred thousands. So those three together are going to equal my six two five. And we'll get these cleaned up and everything when we go to do it. I'm just demonstrating this real quick. So this, underneath a five inch sign bar, this is uh, this bar is five inches roll to roll, which is what we had on our example. That angle right there is equal to half of the taper of that uh, on the that we were looking at on the uh, um, on the machine. So basically, we can take this whole setup over. I can show you what else we do. I've got a little parallel I beam here that I use, very parallel, and we can set our sign bar on top of it. and tilt up and put our gauge block stack in there and actually that right there I put a tie wrap through the holes and just tie wrap the whole thing together and make myself a one piece unit and then I can lay it on its side and get and start some sweeps with this and I'll lay this up against the compound on the lathe to get my uh, taper correct All right? so I know that the compound on my lathe is running uh, parallel to, uh, to, to this axis. So uh, that's how you build a, a sign block stack uh, based on initial measurements, based on the machinery's handbook, tangent chart, not really needed, but I just showed it as a reference. You can go straight from uh, your actual measurements and straight to a sign bar and a gauge block stack uh, without even touching the tangent chart. But I just wanted to show you that, that that's another way to do it if you need to convert it into actual degrees. All right, uh, let's go over to the lathe and uh, we'll keep going on this. Okay, so the next part of the setup is uh, making sure we've got a good uh, reference source, uh, which means our base where we're going to measure from. So what I've got is a compound here, but the compound's rough and bumpy and scarred up from just living its life. So I've laid a parallel beam on top of it held by three magnets. And down here I've got a rook by the tool miser. And I've got an in, a small indicator set up, and that camera's probably blowing out. But what I'm doing is I'm using the parallel beam to cancel out all the lumps and bumps in the side of the compound. And I've stoned it, and I just want to make sure that the side of my compound is parallel with the axes of the compound. So I'm going to hold my hand so the indicator doesn't blow out, and I'm going to move my axes back and just uh, let it roll back and... So I'm zero zero over my uh, over the travel of my compound, so I'm pretty happy that I've got a good reference source um, um, to set my sign bar and make my other adjustments. So I've got a good point of reference. If this was 
you know, if, if this was wedge shaped or something like that, we would have to make a correction uh, for, you know, to cut our angle. But we know we've got a zero zero uh, reference plane to the axis of the compound. So let's, uh, let's move on to the angle that we're going to cut. Okay, so here's my setup here. I got my parallel up against my reference surface here that we measured earlier and checked for zero. And I'm just, I'm just indicating or locating it with three magnets. So I got my parallel bar here. I got my gauge block stack here. Sign bar is laying down. And I, have, and I have the sign bar just lightly clamped in here. And the whole thing's laying down on top of the uh, compound. And if you look down here on the, uh, on the protractor, I started off, if you remember, we were seven degrees, 10 minutes. Five, six, seven. So we're right there, and uh, all, we're, all I'm going to do is move the uh, not the uh, not the compound. I'm just going to move the cross slide over and uh, check for a zero zero reading. So um, uh, that's uh, that's the setup, and that's how we've uh, established that we're uh, uh, we've got the correct angle according to the gauge block stack. All right, so the compound's set, and uh, we're ready to cut a taper. Okay, well, here's another way to check your work. I'm going to hold my hand here so that uh, gauge doesn't blow out. <clears throat> and you can see on our on our cross slide, we're zero, zero. And we're running nice and parallel there. But now what I've done is I've, uh, I've zeroed my compound right here, and I'm going to move this exactly one inch. And during that time, we should see um our uh point one two five on this gauge so we're we're going to uh go ahead and start rotating it and bring it up to zero I should start seeing gauge movement here which I am so that's uh one two three four five six Seven, eight, nine, and ten uh, dollar revolutions, which is exact, exactly an inch. And as you can see, that's our uh, point one two five. Hoping you got maybe if I tilt you in a little bit, but that's what you ended up with. So we've uh, we're good on zero zero. Uh, we're, we're good on a zero zero movement uh, with the cross slide and we're good with our uh, 0.125 on our compound. So we're done with this setup. The uh, compound is set for our taper and uh, we've double checked ourselves and we're ready to cut. All right, uh, so uh, maybe we'll uh, do a two part. This is enough for one day. Thanks for uh, watching.